China is hinting that more stimulus may be on the way as its economy fails to live up to post-lockdown expectations. But will that give a lift to the commodities space? Joining us now to discuss, Daniel Galley, Senior Commodity Strategist with TD Securities. Daniel, great to have you back on the program. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Seems like every day we get another weak economic data point out of China after all of the hype at the beginning of this year about how that reopening was going to fuel their appetite for everything. Well, what's going on there? Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's not only the reopening that fueled optimism, but if we were to have this discussion a month ago, there was an immense amount of optimism surrounding the property sector. Uh, obviously, that hasn't panned out. The situation in China is actually pretty dire. If you look at, you know, the, the trade data that came out earlier this week, it was pretty negative. Uh, exports down 14 percent, imports down 12 percent. That tells you that both external demand from China is declining and domestic demand is pretty bad. Now, the more concerning aspect to me is on the property sector side of the equation. We've seen, um, you know, hopes that earlier in the year that the reopening was going to turn the property sector over. The Chinese government um, bailed on a lot of the restrictions for um, property developers financing. So there, that hope was um, perhaps warranted. But instead, what we've seen is right after the reopening, the property sector has started to slump again. And this is concerning because it might be pointing to structural issues that might turn the economic problem into a liquidity problem. Now, that's a pretty big issue, obviously. Uh, earlier this week, uh, in the middle of all this week data, we did get a rate cut from uh, China's central bank. And then there were some reports today out of uh, state media in China saying at a cabinet meeting, the government said, uh, yeah, we need to do something along the lines of stimulus, but pretty vague. I mean, what can China do at this point? That rate cut seemed to completely over underwhelm, I should say, the market. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, from the monetary policy perspective, China's in a tough situation because the currency is depreciating at a fast pace, but they do need to stimulate. Um, you know, the, the most important part of Ju July Politburo meeting was the omission of President Xi's mantra that houses are for living, not for speculating. That raised the hopes that there was going to be a turnaround in property sector policies. And we have seen, you know, some hints of uh, what might be coming, but overwhelmingly the stimulus that is being talked about is extremely targeted in nature, as opposed to the broad-based type stimulus that saved the global economy in 2015 and in 2008. That's the big question for markets. How exactly are they going to stimulate? And so far, it doesn't look like it is the big stimulus that people are hoping for. We think about all the excitement earlier in the year about China's economic reopening and, the, and then more recently, as you said, the hopes for some sort of stimulus. Was that more on the Western world than China? I mean, did we start to sell ourselves some hype about what China could provide? Yeah, I think, you know, absolutely. Our research suggests that you know, the hype around the Chinese property sector stimulus and the Chinese stimulus overall has overwhelmingly been driven by the West. We say that because um, in the aftermath of that uh, July Politburo meeting, we had the highest inflows into Chinese, foreign inflows into Chinese equities on record. We also saw commodities, copper, you know, other industrial metals rally sharply. And you know, our research suggested that those speculative flows were coming from the West, whereas our tracking of Chinese trader positioning suggested that they were heavily offloading in the aftermath of, uh, July, of the July Politburo meeting, and that definitely um, raised some red flags for caution. Okay, so that's a very fascinating dynamic you mentioned of the inflows and the commodities from the West. If this is now the backdrop for China and we don't know what they're going to do, and you said they're in a pretty tough place in terms of trying to get the economy turned around, what does it mean for commodities? Well, you know, obviously China is by far the largest consumer of commodities. So anything that is detrimental to Chinese economy is bad for the demand side of commodities. I'll caveat, however, that since China's reopening, we've seen the demand for commodities diverge. Raw materials like copper, aluminum, zinc, etc., cetera, um, their demand is subsiding at a pretty notable pace. Uh, whereas for the energy sector, we've actually seen a boom, a recovery in China's demand that really has been driven by more international travel, more flights. Uh, as you'd expect, the pent-up demand for travel in China was pretty significant during the lockdowns. And in turn, that's been driving a lot of the demand side of the equation for the energy complex this year.
if we can't count on China, you say, and it is nuanced, right? I mean, you got the domestic travel, you have a need for fuel and jet fuel, but if we can't count on them to be the save all for all these commodities, what do we need to start thinking about? So uh, there's a few things that we're thinking about in terms of risks. The first we touched upon earlier into is China's you know, property sector issues morphing into a liquidity issue. And we say that because you know, recently there have been some um, trust companies, that's you know, the shadow banking sector in China, that have missed some payments. The concern here is that shadow banks' um, payment failures are going to seep into local government financing vehicles. That concern is exacerbated by the fact that local governments typically finance themselves with land sales. But land sales are down 50% year on year. That's a demand side issue. Um, people don't want to buy more land. They don't want to buy uh, to build more projects. The focus is on completing the projects that are already being um, in construction as opposed to the pipeline for future projects. And that is a big concern for local government financing. So real challenges here in China for their economy, you've laid them out nicely for us. What is the upside potential here for China? What could go right? Well, our economists do expect the fiscal package um, to be announced hopefully before September. That um, you know, should have the largest multiplier effect on China's economy as a whole. But again, what is happening in China is a bifurcation between the old sector industries and the new sector industries that the government actually does want to promote. So more likely than not, that fiscal stimulus is going to be targeted to bolster consumption in the areas China actually wants to bolster consumption in, namely new energy vehicles, for example, and that does have an implication for commodities.